Hello. Good to see you. Well, welcome everybody. Um, Transmittal is about here and we're halfway through the legislative session. Uh, at the outset, I said our focus will remain on delivering on Montanans priorities. Uh, I've heard loud and clear from Montanans in every corner of our state that tax relief is a top priority. And we've been clear since day one. Hardworking Montanans should keep more of what they own. The fact of the matter is Montanans overpaid their taxes and we need to give it back. My budget for Montana families proposed the largest tax cut in history. It's more than $1 billion going back to Montana taxpayers. It provides relief to Montana taxpayers at every income level, including homeowners, small business owners, family farmers and ranchers, and hardworking families. Since the legislature came in, I've been calling on legislators to deliver Montanans tax relief without delay. That's why today I'm thrilled to report that our historic tax relief package is on its way to my desk. Thanks to the hard work of our office, including the budget office and the legislators, and now uh, we now have a historic tax relief package, providing Montanans the largest tax cut in state history. Within the first, and this is all done within the first half of the session. I look forward to signing these bills uh, to send taxpayer money back to hardworking Montanans. All of our tax proposals are rooted in a simple philosophy. Hardworking Montanans should keep more of what they own because ultimately it's not the government's money, it's Montanans. It's the money of the people that earned it. That's why we're putting money back in Montanans' pockets through immediate rebates and permanent long-term tax relief. The historic tax cuts we propose will not only help hardworking families and small business owners keep more of what they earn, but they will also help create more good paying jobs, grow our economy, and help more Montanans achieve the American dream. I want to thank, take a minute to thank Senator Becky Beard, who sponsored the bill to cut the income taxes for Montana taxpayers at every income level. I want to thank Representative Tom Welch for leading the effort to provide Montana homeowners with meaningful property tax relief. We also helped make it easier for small business owners, farmers and ranchers to thrive by further reforming the business equipment tax. For too long, owning equipment needed to operate your business has come with a heavy, unnecessary tax burden. That's why we tripled the business equipment exemption in 2021. And it's why we're raising the business equipment exemption to $1 million for every small business in the state of Montana. This is 10 times what it was when I came into office. Taken together, these changes will eliminate this tax for more than 5,000 Montana small businesses. I wanna thank Representative Josh Kassmeyer for leading the charge in 2021 and again this year in this session. We're also simplifying Montana's complex capital gains tax system to help families, homeowners, retirees, farmers, and ranchers. I appreciate Representative Welsh for championing this common sense bill that will make Montana's capital, capital gains tax rate the fourth largest in the nation fourth lowest in the nation. Thank you for ca catching me on that. Uh, after providing Montanans with over $1 billion in tax relief, we're gonna invest the surplus responsibly, just like any Montana family would. Imagine you get a sizable bonus check at work. Uh, what would you and your family do with it? Well, first you'd put some away for an emergency. Then you'd pay down some of your debt pay off a credit card or get ahead on a car payment. And you'd fix what needs repairing, like a leaky roof or an old furnace. State government should do the same. So we are. First, we're gonna save for, unex for the unexpected and prepare for emergencies, like a national economic downturn or wildfires. Second, we're gonna pay off our debt. Thanks to Representative Lou Jones's bill, we're paying off all of our general obligation debt. Montana 
will be debt free in 23. Saving Montanans $40 million over the next two years in principal and interest payments. And finally, we're going to repair what needs fixing. Through the Safer Montana Roads and Bridges Fund, we'll invest $100 million to repair our roads and bridges. I want to thank Representative Courtney Sprunger for sponsoring the bill to establish the Safer Montana Roads and Bridges Fund. I look forward to signing it soon. Folks, there's a lot to be excited about. But our work here is not done. I want you to know we're just getting started. The rest of our budget is before the legislature. Like our plan to fix our broken state-run facilities, especially our state hospital and state prison that have fallen into disrepair over the prior decades. And our plan to expand water and sewer infrastructure to increase housing capacity also known as our proposed HOMES program. And our focus on fixing what's in disrepair is why I was in Billings yesterday. There, I listened to local leaders. They told me about the need for investments to reduce disaster, disaster risk and make our communities more resilient. I saw where the Billings Bench Water Canal failed in 2021, flooding residential neighborhoods. This canal is 63 miles long, and it runs right along the edge of Billings, right below the rims, and it's 120 years old. It's pretty long in the tooth. A total failure would flood downtown Billings, certainly resulting in the loss of property and probably resulting in the loss of life. That's why our budget for Montana families invests $100 million of our state surplus to create a local disaster resiliency fund. As the old saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. For every dollar invested in disaster mitigation, it saves an average of $6 over the life of the project. The fund will help us prevent emergencies by leveraging state dollars nine to one with federal dollars. Just one state dollar can secure nine federal dollars to invest in local disaster mitigation. It's common sense, fiscally responsible measure. Re Representative Larry Brewster of Billings is sponsoring the bill that would establish the local disaster resiliency fund. It easily passed in its first house committee as well as the house floor on its second reading. Two weeks ago though, Members of the House Appropriations Committee tabled it, bringing progress on the local disaster resiliency fund to a standstill. Let's be clear, failing to move this bill forward, pass it, and get it on my desk will jeopardize critical projects to reduce the risk of future disasters. What would that look like? In Yellowstone County, there would be unnecessary delays in repairing the canal I visited yesterday. There will be unnecessary delays in proceeding with the Billings Drought Mitigation Project. In the Flathead, there would be unnecessary delays in completing the Flathead Electric Power Line Mitigation Project, ensuring folks have safe, reliable transmission lines. In Glasgow, there will be unnecessary delays to recertify the levy that protects the community. And in communities across all of Montana, there will be unnecessary delays in wildfire mitigation projects to protect lives and property. The local disaster resiliency fund will support each of these projects, leveraging federal dollars to get it done. It's a win-win for Montana. As I've said, failing to establish the local disaster resiliency fund would be a dereliction of duty. Failing to get this done would risk millions upon millions of dollars of damage. Again, I ask legislators, is it worth the gamble? I don't think so. I urge legislators to get this done for the health and safety of our communities. While many of our tax relief measures are moving forward, I want to highlight one that some legislators decided to stall a child tax credit for lower income and middle class Montana families. 
With prices skyrocketing, it's harder for Montanans to make ends meet, especially for Montana parents who are raising their young kids. Our budget for Montana families proposes a $1,200 per child tax credit to help families with the rising cost of raising their younger children, including health care, child care, food, clothing, diapers. A child tax credit strengthens families empowers parents, especially working mothers. The child tax credit is historically a very conservative idea. It's pro-family and pro-child. President Trump expanded the federal child tax credit in his tax cuts in 2017. Representative Josh Kazmaier of Fort Benton is sponsoring the child tax credit bill in this legislative session. It easily passed its first House committee and the House on its second reading. Last week, though, the members of the House Appropriations Committee tabled it, again, without explanation. These legislators are stalling this pro-family, pro-growth tax cut. For the sake of hardworking Montana families, our friends in the legislature ought to get this bill across the finish line. Let's get it done. To close, I'm optimistic about what we've accomplished together, both Republicans and Democrats, in the first half of this legislative session, but there's clearly more work to do. Montanans sent us to Helena to serve them and deliver on their priorities and get the job done. That's what I'm focused on every day, so let's get it done. With that, I'd be happy to take some questions. Who's first? Yes. Governor uh, John Wright of Montana Television Network, uh, sp speaking on Transmittal, uh, how do you feel um, that we are now at the halfway point? Is there any legislation that didn't make it that you wish would have? Well, we're, uh, we're tracking a number of things. So we don't know. The dust hasn't even fully settled yet. Transmittal's not done until the end of the week. Uh, I just want to highlight the fact that uh, getting a billion dollars of tax relief for Montanans uh, in, done before Transmittal, that is really historic. Talking to legislators and f prior legislative leaders, Usually this stuff doesn't have to happen until the 11th hour, so I'm just proud we were able to deliver early. I always want to see things happen faster, uh, but this is a remarkable result of collaboration between uh, the administration and the legislature. Yes? Uh, talk to them with Lee. Uh, Governor, you said uh, appropriations table to tell child tax credit without explanation. Have you not received an explanation for why it was tabled? Or? Um, well, we can give you the voting record. You can call them and ask them. I, I don't. I don't have any additional information for you. Okay. Yes. Kayla with the Daily Montana. I'm curious uh, what your plans will be if the legislature does in fact fund uh, the Medicaid reimbursement rates to the Guide House recommendations. Yeah. So. Uh, we put forward really the largest increase in Medicaid reimbursement rates mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. because we think they need to go up. Uh, I'm glad to see the legislature see that they also believe that they need to go up. So there's no disagreement that we need to raise rates. Uh, and I look forward to getting the bill that they pass. <laughs> Online? Yeah, Caitlin? Uh, Josh. Josh, go ahead. You're online. Well, it's important that we get this passed. For those uh, that don't follow all the numbers, my understanding SB 47 is this uh, trucker training stuff that we need. We're the 50th state to pass this. Uh, we need to get it done so that our truckers don't lose their licenses and we don't lose uh, federal funding for our uh, highways. Uh, so I was pleased to see the motion. Uh, I did call out the legislature and I'm also pleased to see that they responded and are now moving the bill. Question here in the room? Yeah, when, um, we're going to look at the ability to have a tax back soon. There's, there's long term, well, short term stuff, long term stuff there. There's not long term property tax relief in that. What do you hope to see in the second half of the session to address that issue? Yeah, so property tax is a, a tremendous concern. That's why we really prioritize immediate relief in the form of rebates. 
uh, which is in this package that's been approved. In parallel with that, we need to put reforms in place to make sure that local municipalities are responsible in how they grow their budgets. Uh, you've seen some of the numbers. Some municipalities have had their spending grow 70% higher than inflation and population growth. And that's really the primary driver in property taxes. The state doesn't get property tax. It goes to the local municipalities. And most of our counties and municipalities are very good fiscal stewards. We have some outliers. Uh, I think we need to increase transparency. There's a bill coming through the legislature in that regard to make it easier for local folks to know where the property taxes are going. We also have a bill that's looking at allowing people to pay their taxes monthly rather than in two lump sums per year. That reduces the burden. Uh, but also, we've got to look at uh, some of the runaway spending that occurs at the local level and, and bring some more accountability there. So we'll look forward to getting some of those bills. Okay. Yes, Caitlin. From Alex. Alex, you're online. Go ahead. Uh, so we have our governor, Alex Sackerson, here with Montana Free Press. Um, you've uh, announced that we'll be signing House Bill 15 today, uh, providing that 3% uh, inflation adjustment to the K-12 budget uh, for the next biennium. But like over the last biennium, uh, we've seen inflation rise by about 10%, and I'm wondering. Do you think the state should be doing more to fill that gap for public schools? Yeah, so I think our goal in education has to be to help every child reach their full potential. Uh, that's why we're supporting this increase in funding. It's also why we've been such a strong advocate for increasing starting teacher pay uh, through the TEACH Act. The TEACH Act raised starting teacher pay for over 400 uh, public school teachers in the first year of its enactment, and our current budget um, has uh, another significant increase in that funding to encourage local school boards to increase starting teacher pay. So it's a priority for us, and we'll continue to act on it. So can I yeah. kind of wrap those last two questions together, right? Local school boards increasing teacher pay, they've got to go to property taxes to do that generally. Mm -hmm. We know there's concern about property taxes, particularly in some of the high cost of living communities. Do you think the state should step in with additional aid to help bridge some of that gap? Um, the, we need to make sure our, kit, our schools are properly funded. That's handled at the local level through property taxes. Um, and we'll continue to partner with these municipalities to make sure that uh, the resources are there for our kids. Yeah. Okay. Peter. Yeah. Peter, go ahead. You're online. Maybe not. Okay, well, if he comes back, we'll go back to him. Any other questions here in the room? Great, thank you, everybody.